Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the SEMA Council podcast. My name is Madeline Grossi, and I'm one of your co-hosts again for this season. Joining me on the hosting side today, we have Luke, who is also a very familiar uh, co-host face here on the podcast. And I'm going to throw it over to Luke to introduce our guest for today. Yeah, thanks, Maddie. So our guest is Jordan Hall today. He's the current coordinator of, of athletic communications at U of T. Previously graduating from York University with a Bachelor of Arts in History and earning a Diploma of Sport Management from Durham College, Jordan has been able to gain many experiences in the sport industry. And we welcome Jordan as the ninth guest of season five here on the Speedman Council podcast. So welcome, Jordan. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, Maddie. Uh, happy to uh, join you today and, and discuss my experiences. Yeah, so let's just get right into it. Can you just start off by telling us a bit about your current role at U of T and your path to how you got here? Yeah, for sure. So uh, as you mentioned, my my proper title is Athletic Communications Coordinator uh, with the University of Toronto Varsity Blues, uh, their athletic department. Um, for most other institutions, it might go by a different name, uh, as it was at Brock Sports Information Coordinator, at a lot of schools down south, Sports Information Director, SID. Um, and really what the position is, is purely a communications type position. Uh, we oversee a lot of things when it comes to varsity athletics, uh, the basics kind of being the website, the social media, historical records, uh, webcasts, um, league conference requirements in terms of statistics and game film. And, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a bunch of different hats, but uh, I think that's what makes it enjoyable for me. Yeah, that's awesome. And then um, could you just tell us a little bit more about like, what does a day in the life look for you right now at U of T? Like, what does your role kind of encompass? Yeah, so uh, University of Toronto, we have 41 uh, varsity sports. Um, wow. So that's a, a lot to, to give attention to. And obviously, uh, they have a sport model in place, which kind of allows us to, to prioritize what we need to prioritize. This position is very much a week to week position. Uh, just with the way sports goes, we we know one week may be busy at home, another week uh, all our teams may be on the road, which makes it a little lighter. Um, beginning of the week is going to be wrapping up the previous week. Uh, we're looking at our conference uh, athlete of the week submissions, play of the weeks. We're doing any stat changes that might need to be made. We're uploading photos from the weekend, uh, doing some photo labeling, um, and just kind of doing what we can through those first couple of days. Uh, and then once we get through that, the rest of the week is prepping for the next coming weekend. So uh, I'll just use this this past weekend as an example. Uh, we had what we call a Super Saturday. So uh, at the University of Toronto, we were hosting doubleheader basketball, doubleheader volleyball, a men's hockey game, and swimming divisionals all on that Saturday. So it's prepping everything that needs to go into those games, uh, setting up the live streams, setting up the live stats, uh, making the the paperwork that needs to be made with it, whether it's the game day programs or pronunciation guides for broadcast or uh, any other additional pieces. So uh, it's it's beginning of the week is finishing out the previous week. And then from that point forward, it's it's prepping for the upcoming weekend. And then on game day, uh, it's just providing that coverage that makes people interested in what's going on. So we've put a, a big emphasis this year in our communications plan on photos uh kind of getting away steering away from graphics uh and then obviously we we i think we have a really good video team this year so finding ways to incorporate some of those uh exciting clips into what we're putting out as well yeah sounds like brock you know we have uh, i mean all universities but this is a busy time of year for varsity games and personally i love going to the varsity games i think it's so fun if i have nothing to do on a saturday afternoon and and the hockey teams are playing all even if I if I don't have time to go watch all three periods, I'll go over for a period or two and, you know, just so support fellow students, support the athletes. Um, and I've mentioned this a whole bunch of times on on the podcast as well, but student tickets are free at Brock. So I encourage everyone who's listening, you know, get your get your free student ticket, support your your athletes and your friends and that and and, you know, the people you see in class. Um, and then, you know, that's a way to to maybe talk to them or say, hey, I saw your game this weekend. And, and you know, it's a little bit of a conversation starter, too. So 
Um, I've always loved loved athletes or loved the varsity sports. Um, maybe that's because we're in sport management and, and you know, we like all sports, but I, I bet you Luke could say the same thing. Um, but Jordan, we see that you've pr uh, previously worked at Brock as well, um, not too long ago. So could you maybe explain a little bit more of your role here and, and the impact that you left at Brock? Yeah, I've, I've had quite a bit of the the odyssey when it comes to, to my career. So for all the sport management students kind of wondering where to go, uh, it may not be one and done after graduation. You, you're probably going to work your way through things, especially with uh, how how the work environment has changed from, say, 30 years ago when people would be in one position for 30 years. So for me, it was the connections I was able to build uh, when I was an assistant previously at the University of Toronto. Uh, the athletic director at Brock University, uh, Melissa Chris, she was previously a manager of intercollegiate sport at U of T. So I was able to work there with three years alongside her. And it was through that connection uh, that when the opportunity came up last year, uh, that Brock was looking for somebody uh, and I was looking for a position at that time as well. Uh, that connection with Melissa is what kind of opened that door for me to come to Brock and fill that sports information role. Uh, because one, I knew she was great to work with. And two, I think she knew I was able to kind of uh, deliver on what was needed in that position. Uh, so yeah, it was through that that I was able to get in. And, you know, those those first months when I was hired was right at the, the thick of things. I was brought in, not with a lot of time to prep as things were getting started in September. Um, so working alongside uh, Erica Wortley, the manager there, and Stephen Leithwood, uh, one of the communications coordinators, um, we were able to quickly come up with a plan. And uh, I think last year was uh, a great uh, showcase of what Brock Athletics can be in terms of what we're able to put out uh, for communications. I think we are able to establish something similar of a sport model because, uh, again, Brock has quite a lot of sports to offer as well, and you want to make sure you're you're showcasing everything. Obviously, the the basketballs and the hockeys and stuff get lots of the limelight. Uh, sport management students are coming in, and you know they they're watching the uh, hockey night in Canada every Saturday. But in our role, we need to give love to the figure skatings. We need to give love to the softballs. Uh, Brock is very much a wrestling school, so I had to quickly learn about wrestling and rowing. Um, so yeah, I think over that year, I was able to, uh, work with them and figure out a communications plan that was going to work to, to showcase all the different sports. And then on top of that, there was a big project in the background, just in terms of some, uh, historical record keeping, uh, Brock hadn't had a sports information person, um, for a number of years. So there was a bit of a gap and, uh, I think I was able to make a good dent into that, uh, before leaving, uh, Brock. Yeah, no, and I obviously worked with you last year, so I got to see a bit more behind the scenes of that than maybe most people do. And being a part of helping execute that plan was definitely a really, really cool experience. And just being able to get involved in my school community definitely would recommend for anyone else looking for something similar to do that. And I know we talked about it a bit before the interview and a bit last year. Um, I know you did this program in mind when you worked at Durham College and you kind of wanted to execute it at Brock. Um, I believe it's called Badger for Badger now. Could you just maybe provide a bit of background on that idea and initiative and how it came to be in Durham and then how you kind of started to get it going at Brock before you went to UOT. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely been done at a, a lot of schools and it's a great way to um, keep the student athletes involved when maybe their team's not in season or maybe their, their sport isn't, uh, doesn't have a competition that weekend. And uh, it serves as a great tool for camaraderie between all the sports. Uh, Cause obviously student athletes as we know are so busy it's practically you know your full-time student part-time job being a student athlete um so more or less what it was when i was working previously at durham uh the program there was called dc for dc and there was pillars that we would tell all the students okay like this is what we're looking at you'll be awarded points teams will be awarded points whichever team accumulates the most points based on these pillars at the end of the year will get some additional funds given to their team account which they can then spend on uh, some type of team bonding party or initiative or they can spend on maybe some additional gear like soccer teams in the past have 
purchase some big breakers and stuff because obviously fall uh, fall soccer can get pretty chilly outside. Mm-hmm. Um, but the pillars that we had in place were uh, community service, what teams were doing within the community, uh, academics, what the team's uh, overall cumulative GPA was, how are they doing in class, uh, strength and conditioning. That was mostly just based on attendance. Are you going to your strength and conditioning? Are you trying to get better as an athlete? And then the last thing was that camaraderie piece. It's are you supporting each other? Are you attending the other sports games? And we were able to track that. Obviously, social media makes it a lot easier. Just asking the athletes, you know, when you're there, post, tag uh, our, our main account so that we can see that you were there. And uh, it almost becomes a bit of a, a, a race between the teams. You know, the men's rugby team is at every volleyball game and they're making sure that they're known that they're there and then uh the women's volleyball team wants to you know make sure that they can keep up as well so they're attending every single one of the basketball games and they're tagging too so uh it became such a good thing and uh yeah it was something that we discussed at brock and what had been done at other institutions as well because uh again it's just it's just further building out that entirety of a community uh instead of necessarily being siloed you don't necessarily want your 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 basketball athletes to feel like, you know, every waking moment, they have to be worrying about themselves. Just having that connection between all the different sports, all the different athletes, all the different shared experiences uh, definitely helps with the overall student experience for those athletes who are constantly kept so busy. And I'll just say to Luke, like, you definitely got a firsthand uh, look at everything, uh, getting to experience being a comms assistant last year and, and being at those games. And that's one of the things I enjoy is being able to work with students that maybe not necessarily student athletes. There's so many people behind the scenes that I don't think people understand that are making these games happen, whether it's uh, the students that are working the game day tables, whether it's uh, communications assistants, events assistants. There's so many people that are are trying to make that experience so much better for the student athletes and just being able to uh, pick your brain and the other communications assistant brains and ask you questions of, of what you think is the best way to go forward. Like uh, obviously a lot of times you and the other students have a lot more of uh, the know of what's going on right now. So that's a huge benefit too. I think it's really fun too. Like I work down at the at the cage in at the in Brock Recreation, um, and we're kind of responsible for you know like setting up that like the Bob Davis gym and and making sure that everything's ready to go for game day. And I kind of love like the evolution of game days. Like you come into your shift at four o'clock, and you know like the gym's empty, the bleachers are all pushed back, and then you know like little by little, come six o'clock, the gym's fully ready then people start to come in everybody shows up and then at the end of the night you take it all down and I kind of love that like evolution and adrenaline that you get of game day and and seeing how it all transforms and then you know back to like school life and lab life and and that gym is now used for a kin lab on Monday morning Um, but all the varsity um, athletics that took place on the weekend also happened in that gym in a totally different atmosphere so I just kind of love that aspect of it too but how those spaces can be shared for sure. And Brock, um, Brock has Brock has a good atmosphere too. Like being able to experience it over that last year, that tiny, tiny gym you all have uh, when you're cramming in 600 people for a women's volleyball championship or uh, <laughs> you're cramming in 600 people for uh, a random Wednesday basketball doubleheader. Uh, you know, it, it can get full. Like the way that gym's set up, you're right on top of the, the court and it's it's quite the experience. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, we like to have a little bit of fun here on the podcast. We don't have to talk about, you know, um, what you do every day. We want to know about, you know, some of your sports experiences and why you love the sport industry just like we do. So I'll start off with the first one here. What was your favorite moment from when you were here at Brock? Um, I know you just mentioned, you know, like the volleyball championship or or that we have so many sports you had to learn about wrestling and, and rowing. So what do you think stands out from your time here? Yeah, when I was thinking about that one, uh, I think the most memorable experience I got to have there was uh, I was able to travel with the wrestling team to the national championship in Edmonton. And uh, having worked at a couple other schools previously, uh, being an assistant at U of T and stuff like that, I never, wrestling was never necessarily really on the radar. Mm -hmm. And wrestling is very much 
of varsity sport at Brock. Like mm-hmm. it is Olympic caliber. You have Olympic caliber coaches. You have af- student athletes that are going off to compete in Pan American championships and world championships. And it's, it's absolutely insane. The level of uh, competition that comes within the wrestling team. So I think getting to travel with that team to Edmonton for the U sports national championship while I was there, uh, getting to pick the brains of uh, the coaches uh, Dave Colley and Marty Calder and how crazy, how crazy those two guys are. And the, the memorable voice that anybody that's talked to Marty Calder might know, uh, the deep raspy voice that he has, uh, getting to just hang out with the, the athletes, uh, and then getting to better understand the sport because it's something I had never really had too much exposure to everything that came with that weekend, um, in terms of the weigh-ins, the weight cut that's required of it the day before, immediately after that, you're going into competition, the round robin matches, how the match, I didn't even know how matches were scored in wrestling. Yeah. So I, I think that's one of the most memorable experiences. And then you add on top of it that the men's team won the national championship that year. And obviously winning uh, makes everything a little bit more memorable for, for everybody. So uh, in terms of my time at Brock, if I'm picking a specific experience, I would have to say that as uh, probably something that, that I'll hang on to and carry with me. And it's transferred over to my time at U of T. Like, obviously I know a lot more when dealing with the University of Toronto wrestling team. And uh, we have upcoming, uh, U of T is hosting a wrestling invitational. So, you know, I'm not too as intimidated as I might've <laughs> been previously uh, when dealing with that sport and uh, the coverage that's required for it. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously Brock's rest- wrestling program, like you said, is just like top notch. Um, I will just say for me personally, going back to the women's volleyball there, I mean, just I when I started the role back in September of last year with as the assistant, I honestly didn't know a ton about volleyball, but just being there in that role, like you kind of did with wrestling, just being there, you know, most game days and just you kind of pick up things along the way as you go. And I think that's a really cool experience too, just kind of getting involved in sports that you're not necessarily familiar with, but that's okay because you can, you're happy with the lean on you and you get kind of just watching it. You're just going to learn along the way anyways. And honestly, that championship game, you know, a packed house, Brock being the top seed going down two two sets to none and coming all the way back to win it was definitely probably a top three sporting memory for me just overall in my life, honestly. And just for you, Jordan, too, do you have a favorite sports memory that sticks out to you? It could be one from working at Brock or U of T or just personally as a fan. I think uh, a favorite sports memory for me, I'm just going to stick with uh, my career experiences just because that's kind of what's on top of mind for me right now. But uh, I think so far for me, it would be uh, when I was previously working at Durham. Durham holds a very special place in my heart. Obviously, being a student there, it's kind of where I discovered uh, this career path and and what I wanted to do. Again, starting there as an assistant uh, during my student days and then uh, eventually having the opportunity to go back there and work full time in this type of role. Uh, We hosted the uh, national champion, men's soccer national championship. Uh, and entering that event uh, with the eight best teams from across the country. Well, I'll say seven best teams from across the country at the start of the event, because we were in it just as hosts. Uh, And our team was eliminated in the provincial quarterfinals. So they had lots of time to prep and get ready uh, for the national championship because other teams were still competing at the provincials. While uh, all we knew is that we would be hosting the national championship in a couple of weeks and everything that went into that event, the magic of what ended up resulting in terms of as the hosts, we competed in those prime time 8 PM under the light matches. And it was upset after upset after upset. And all of a sudden at the end of the championship, our team, which was not a nationally ranked team, were lifting up the national championship banner. And having known those athletes for a few years, uh, having worked with some of the students that were helping me cover that uh, championship, uh, having worked with the head coach, Dave Ashfield, who's, I'll say, has been one of the best coaches I've ever worked with. Um, And just getting to share all of that uh, at that time was something really special. Uh, And, you know, there, there's memories throughout that entire, there was a day, like, I think the second day of the championship when we were hosting some of the consolation rounds at 5 a.m., everybody had to get out and shovel off the field because there was a giant downpour of snow. Mm. Uh, And then we're all just figuring out where we go. All of a sudden we're shifting games to a, a, a dome for the two morning games while the field gets cleared and then uh, get back for the primetime games. And it's just a, 
it's it's an example of a collection of people coming together to make something uh, something special really happen. So that's another one that really stands out for me. Yeah, for sure. And then um, you kind of answered it there, you, like as you said, um, you know, Durham College is kind of where you found your love of the sport industry. But maybe before that, like, did you have any experiences as a, as a kid that made you like love the sport industry, or or what kind of what once you got your your degree, like what made you think you know the sport industries for me? Yeah, I think like uh, a lot of sport management students, uh, sport management grads. I grew up playing all types of different sports, uh, and it's always been a part of my life. But after university, uh, when I graduated from New York, I was very much in a, what do I do now? The goal was always get a university degree. That's what was always kind of like in the head. And then there wasn't anything set afterwards. So it was kind of a year of uh, thinking what to do next after that. And uh, yeah, because sports was a part of it, that's what led me to Durham to do the sport management program. And it was while I was there that taking a bunch of the different classes that come with the sport management program, obviously learning how to run a league, learning how to run facilities, learning how to do all these different things. It was the comms class that really stuck with me. Uh, and obviously having a history degree where I had to write essay upon essay upon essay, writing uh, was a, a key thing for me. And then having the opportunity to work within the Durham uh, athletics department while I was a student uh, opened it up even more. And that's when I kind of zeroed in on working in post-secondary athletics. And I knew this was kind of, uh, this was kind of going to be the spot for me. Uh, I have had some opportunities outside of uh, collegiate sports as well, but mm -hmm. I just, there's something about the community. There's something about the community of coaches, of, about the community of staff. There's a lot of selflessness that goes into it because of the time commitment that comes with working those September and October nights and weekends and late January uh, playoff runs and all that kind of stuff. But there's just uh, a lot of joy that goes into it too. Uh, regardless of winning or losing, it's 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 a, all about the experience that we're able to provide for the the students, and and that was kind of where where that decision was made. Uh, following that that string of coincidences, I'm gonna say, I don't know how I ended up at Durham in sport management. I don't know what it was about the communications class specifically. Uh, I don't know what it was about my old boss at Durham, who's now the athletic director there, Scott Dennis, uh, giving me a chance to do it. But all those things kind of uh, definitely steered me in that direction. Yeah, well, that's great. And and uh, I've, I've loved hearing, you know, like how like your experiences and, and how much you've kind of loved, you know, learning about different sports and, and all the different uh, opportunities that you've had. Um, and you know, we've had a great conversation today. So on behalf of Luke and I and the SPEMA Council podcast, we'd like to thank you for joining us. And, you know, we like to give our guests the, the last word and give you the floor before we close out the episode. So anything you want to say to our listeners or any advice that you have for students watching um, would be great. But thank you again for joining us. And, and we've had a great time today. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, Maddie. Uh, I, the biggest piece of advice I constantly give back to sport management students, and again, I kind of uh, mentioned it at the top, it's uh, don't necessarily think that uh, it's going to be a one-stop solution uh, mm -hmm. for your career. Uh, you're going to end up bouncing around uh, until you maybe find the thing you really like, and then it's just about uh, working as hard as you can to keep that as part of your life. Um, so working as an assistant you're going to do that bit of a grind uh early on uh but you know five seven years within into that career uh hopefully hopefully you you find some balance and you find uh ways to make it so that you can uh you can continue doing that thing that you love uh while also having so, some some work-life balance so that's the key uh is just understanding that uh, there may be some bouncing around, but you'll get where, where you want to be. You just have to keep at it. Thank you. Thanks, Jordan.